Welcome back, Turning Hard Times and Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really glad to have Dr. Quentin Henning with me once again. Today, he's here to give us an update on SK Mining. Uh, that is a sponsor to this show as well. SK Trades uh, in Toronto under ESK. You can tr- buy it down here in the States under ESKYF. 169.4 million shares, $1.68 in U.S. money, giving you a market cap of around $285 million in U.S. funds. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Henning, thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Dave. Always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure to hear from you, no doubt about that. Now, I want to know, uh, maybe for the sake of people who aren't familiar with SK, I think our regular listeners to the show are familiar with it probably, but we get new people from time to time. Maybe just give the overall investment thesis for this story. Absolutely. That's a good place to start. Uh, SK Mining has a very large land package about 520 odd square kilometers that are immediately adjacent to the old SK Creek mine, which is now under the control of Skeena, Skeena Resources. Uh, SK Creek, uh, if you look back in history, was one of the highest grade mines ever operated on planet Earth. It was a high grade, what we call VMS, vulcanogenic mass sulfide deposit. And uh, it was discovered in the late 1980s. It was uh, at a time when gold wasn't really trading all that flash. Uh, it was, you know, I think when the deposit was found, I think gold was trading around 300 to 320 an ounce yeah. or something in that range. But um, it, it sure made a lot of uh, noise in the market back in that time. That This was one of the most amazing discoveries really ever made in, in Canada. Uh, there was a lot of question about what it was when they first drilled it. Nobody quite understood the geology. They didn't understand what it was. You know, but after a few years, they recognized it was a BMS deposit, one of these seafloor black smoker type deposits. Mm-hmm. And um, in one of the people in particular who who helped define that was Thomas Monarchy, who's part of our team here at SK Mining. Tom Thomas is a professor at the Colorado School of Mines, and he did his dissertation at SK Creek. Um, SK Creek, you know, is a, a, a modest scale total production. It's about 3.3 million ounces of gold and about 160 million ounces of silver, but extremely high grade. It was, the average grade was about 46 grams per ton, uh, life of mine, and the, the silver grade was about 2.2 kilograms of ton uh, <laughs> per, yeah, so, you, you know, life of mine. So you can you can see it was an extremely rich deposit. Now, the the deposit that was mined by Homestake and the Barrick back in the old days uh, had a lot of lower grade, not low grade, but lower grade material or in and around it. So, uh, Skeena has presently d- drilled to find, I think, in the order of five or six million ounce gold equivalent. Wow. Uh, but you know, at, at lower grade, so we'll call it you know four or five gram uh, gold equivalent. Um, but it, it it will fall in an open pit. It's a big system that that can definitely uh, produce a lot of gold, probably a few hundred thousand ounces. I think they've done a a pre-feasibility level study that generates several hundred thousand ounces, maybe four or five hundred thousand ounces gold equivalent per year for a life of mine that's uh, over ten years. So it's it's a good project, um, but we've got the rest of the system here. We got we got the entire district of prospective rocks for these VMS deposits. We, you know, when VMS form on the sea floor, they tend to form in clusters. Uh, and each deposit might be, you know, if anywhere from a few uh, million tons up to even sometimes 10 plus million tons or tens mm-hmm. of millions of tons. And w- what's always, you know, kind of been a mystery at SK Creek or this region is you have a great deposit at SK Creek. Where's the rest of these things? You know, like where, where's the, the cluster of VMS, if you will? And, you know, we hold probably 85% of the perspective ground. For this style of, of deposit, so we're we're out there exploring for SK Creek analogs, and we've we've already found two TV and Jeff, and they've grown dramatically just in the past year, a couple of years with drilling, um, and now we're hitting it hard this year. We're getting out, and we're we're going to try to find some more. Yeah, and the announcement just came this morning of uh, the program, the uh, 2022 drill program. Uh, you have a somewhat short season; it's up there in British Columbia. But you'll start, I guess, this year is starting as early as, as any year, the way from what I can uh, see. You're getting an early start. 
uh, compared to some years anyway, the, from what I can uh, from what I can discern. Uh, now, you're, you're, what, talk to us a little bit about this program. I know that a good part of it is going to have to do with the TV and Jeff that you just uh, referred to, and I think there's some indication or some belief that these two, that are they're four or five kilometers apart, may be connected. Yes, that's uh, the working hypothesis. We did a lot of work last year between the two areas and then even to the north and to the south where they extend a long strike. And we've defined a quarter of about five or six kilometers in length in which we're seeing really good soil samples that tell us there's a lot more mineralization. Uh, they did find rock samples and some evidence, you know, strong evidence of more of, of this style of mineralization along strike. So these systems are likely connected at some some level. We don't know exactly how yet because we got to drill it, but we have a hunch that the the overall strike extent of the TV Jeff area is at least at least five kilometers. It's open in both directions. So, and what we're going to do this year is do a, a very systematic program of drilling fences. Uh, so lines of holes, and these holes would be oriented. The, the holes themselves are oriented from east to west, so they angle back towards the mm -hmm. west. And we drill fences, which means, uh, you know, one hole after another, so that we make sure that if any, any mineralization is kind of running through an area, we the overlapping fences make sure that you, you actually see that in, in your drilling. So we're going to, you know, cast a big net, if you will, across this area. And, and try to find the extensions, the connections between TB and Jeff, the extensions, and, and perhaps even new deposits. You know, this is a bit uh, of a third-dimensional game, too, because some of these deposits occur in different parts of the stratigraphy. So we know, for example, <clears throat> that the Jeff system ties in with the lower part of the TV system. And we don't know yet, but will soon, if there's mineralization that equates to the upper TV system over Jeff, and then vice versa. If there's uh, mineralization that equates to the to the Jeff system over a TV, but uh, we're going to find out. We'll, we'll have we have a lot of drilling, thirty thousand meters this year. A lot of it will be focused along this corridor, but we're going to test new areas too. We've got, uh, for example, Excelsior, which is on the west side of the anticline. It's immediately uh, over the top of the SK anticline from TV and Jeff, and we're going to test areas that again showed up as very strong soil anomalies in last year's program. They look like basically TV Jeff style anomalies, uh, but just dipping on on uh, west on the west side of the anticline. So you know, think of it like a rainbow. You know, where if TV and Jeff are the pot in one side of the rainbow, then we're going to go over and test the other side of the rainbow. Uh, and then up at uh, Scarlet Ridge, we're going to hit that area very hard. That was an area we found late last year, uh, really encouraging mineralization in the field. Strong signs of extensive VMS uh, system in that location. We did find historic data uh, from mm. a company called Granges, which uh, drilled some holes there right around the time of the SK Creek discovery. They actually hit some high grade, uh, but never followed up. And, and this area just looks ripe for, for another, you know, yet another discovery of this, these VMS deposits. Uh, we also have a lot of work planned down at C10 and Vermilion. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the th big pushes this year is we have crews hired to to go out and do a lot of prospecting level activities, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important in that period prior to drilling. We want these crews to go out and do mapping and sampling and identify, uh, you know, the the best areas to test with the drill hole later this season. So we got a big big push on that front. Yeah, well, thirty thousand meter drill program from what I read and. Uh... How much of that will be devoted to TV and Jeff? Yeah, about two-thirds goes to TV and Jeff, and then the remaining third goes to testing uh, these new targets that will, will pop up around Excelsior, Scarlet Ridge, maybe even down at C10 and Vermilion. Uh, we're going to we're gonna hit this pretty hard this year. And then, look, the, the other aspect, I think uh, it, it kind of moved slow last year due to COVID, but that road that we've oh, agreed yeah. to work on with, with uh, Seabridge, is is supposed to be uh, under commencement here shortly, and that road takes us right past the the old Sib Lulu target area. We we didn't do any drilling there last year because it makes more sense to wait and uh, until the road passes that area, so that we have easier access and we can drill that more cheaply. So we put that target 
not not because it's not geologically important, but simply because we can drill it cheaper once the road is in. We put it down the list a bit, but uh, we do anticipate that road being completed this season, that first segment at least. Yeah, as I recall, um, that SIB is more to the north on the on the whole consolidated property. Yes, uh, SIB Lulu is is actually on the west side of the anticline, uh-huh. and it's, it's a long strike, so a long strike to the uh, south southwest from the old SK Creek mine. It's right. part of, part of that system. Yes, right. Oh, a lot of a lot of exciting things going on. What about um, you know? This is a gold silver rich polymetallic there's some other base metals in there as well have has there been some metallurgical studies done on this quentin uh we've done a lot of petrography here recently identifying the, the ore minerals and how they mm-hmm. they're situated in the rock and we uh-huh. will be doing some met work out of the samples that we collect from drilling this year mm-hmm. but but one of the one of the advantages we have already jay is that uh the metallurgy has been done extensively at the SK Creek deposit. And from what we can see, the the samples, the material that we've collected and studied under the microscope from our project resembles, very strongly resembles that at, at uh, the old SK Creek mine. So Skeena uh, have done a lot of metallurgy already. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that, you know, just my, my instinct is that the results we get from any metallurgical work we do will, will be very similar, you know, to the Skeena's work. So we're we're very confident this this should be able to be processed and generate high very high value product. Do you see the TV Jeff uh, target? Is that likely to be an underground mine if it becomes uh, a mine? It, it's always possible. I mean, look at the original SK Creek deposit. That was a very high grade underground mine. Um, if we find that high, like we we've got some really nice high grade intercepts in both locations. Mm-hmm. And Jeff, and Jeff it tends to be more on the gold end of the spectrum. You know, but we've seen a lot of bonanza grades there. And then at TV, uh, we've seen more silver, actually. So we've got some really high-grade silver, you know, often thousands of grams per ton uh, silver, especially up in that upper VMS that was found late last year. So, uh, yeah, there's there's ob- obviously there's always that potential, that dream of finding a, an a- absolute replicate of the, the original SK Creek mine that w- would like to be an underground mine. But, the, you know, the, the more likely outcome is that, the big, big system here, this five-kilometer corridor, mm-hmm. and in Jeff will be akin to to the Skeena uh, system that they're they're now developing. Uh, you know, and, and the footprint of TV Jeff, importantly, is about two times the size mm-hmm. of the one that Skeena's um, tackling at the moment. Yeah, so maybe at depth, there's something richer, possibly. You don't I, know. I don't know, but uh, yeah. you know, these, the, the systems in this area seem to generate that very high grade. Uh, you know, kind of you know, really juicy style of mineralization. So, All indeed. right. Well, I, I take it the company's financed for this drill program. Yes. Right? We, had, uh, we raised uh, money, I think, back in March or April. Uh, and the, so the company has, I think, around 9 or 10 right now. Um, they have a lot of warrants coming in. Um, in fact, I think a lot of that money is actually in, in place at this point. So, and I haven't caught up with how much warrants have been exercised, but I think a, a lot of it is. So I think, yeah, the, the funding's all all in place at this point. All right. Um, all right, so I guess in, uh, just people should just be watching for drill results. Anything else? Um, drill results, of course, are going to be quite a few weeks away yet, but anything else they should keep their eyes on for this? Yeah, look, we're, we'll give updates as we as we work on this. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to see mineralization, mm-hmm. uh, this mineralization and stuff. We'll, we'll be able to talk about that and, and talk about the progress the prospecting crews are, are having out in the field. I think uh, I'm really excited to watch them you know, get into these areas like Scarlet Ridge and Excelsior and st- stir up some new targets. So we'll talk as, as we develop our new targets from this data, uh, we'll be talking about that. Very good. We'll fire it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll cer- certainly be uh, keeping our eyes on it. This is one I'm covering in my newsletter, of course, and also uh, it is a sponsor of the show. And uh, not unimportantly to me, I own a few shares myself, so I'm I'm quite interested. Thank you so much, Quentin, for being with us again. Uh, look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Thank you, Jake.